Hi, y'all. I'm Joe, your host and Cannabis Lifestyle Guide, and I'm thrilled to drop into your podcast feed this week. I'm busy cranking out content over on the Soil Sisters podcast right now and trying my hand at industrial hemp farming and regenerative agriculture, supporting your local farmers and ranchers, and growing your own nutrient-dense food and medicine are as crucial as ever. But none of that is possible without healthy soil and the right seeds. As a podcast producer in Canasaur, I was excited to join Alpine Seed Group on a trip to Canna Country Farms back in July to document the farm's seasonal pheno hunt. Canna Country is a small, multi-generational family-operated farm in southern Humboldt County. Utilizing full sun and organic cultivation practices, Ted Blair and Reggie Weedman focus on genetics, bred, and selected on farm for their smoking qualities and effects. And full disclosure, Ted and Reggie are two great friends of mine. Reggie brought a number of his long-worked genetics to the mountain, and both he and Ted collected clones and seedlings to add to the mix. Over the years, they have been sifting through the collection and making selections. And now they're mapping the combining abilities of these selections as they breed them together to make female-only seeds. They are testing the bounds of what they know, which is exactly the kind of people I keep in my circle. If you're interested in growing your own cannabis, or you're simply curious to better understand the thought and effort that goes into breeding award-winning cannabis flower, Listen to this episode of the Cannabis Breeders Network, featuring the duo behind Canna Country Selections. Then head on over to alpineseedgroup.com to find their available seed selection. And be sure to subscribe to Cannabis Breeders Network to get in the weeds on cannabis genetics and breeding. You'll find it wherever you're listening to the podcast. All right, now smoke them if you got them and settle in. It's time to get casually baked and check out the Cannabis Breeders Network. Welcome to the Cannabis Breeders Network, where we get in the weeds with legendary breeders about the history, genetics, and cultivation of cannabis cultivars, all intended to elevate your growing game. This conversation is brought to you by Alpine Seed Group. Welcome to the Cannabis Breeders Network. We are excited to welcome the team behind Canna Country Selections. Ted Blair, Reggie Weedman, thank you so much for inviting thank us you. up to the farm to check out your pheno hunt. Glad to have you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're excited about the pheno hunt this year. We've done a, a whole bunch of crossing from the phenos that we've already hunted. So that's exciting to see the different faces we've selected go into the ones that we've selected. We're stoked to be able to see all the different phenos and all the faces, smells, colors, tastes. And uh, it's just a really exciting, long process. And it's really fun to explore this in the feminized fashion because we've really gotten to know these clones that we've kept in the female form is the form that we most cherish in this plant. And oftentimes with regular breeding male and female, it's the progeny that tell you how that male was. You can take your notes, but what traits it carried on is really down the line. And that's what we're finding too, but we get to see them first in their full female expression and then how they play together. For instance, the anthocyanins with the 26 watching which ones that it's crossed with that they're really promoted like the 29 which one they're less promoted like the 37 and then which ones where there's like a nice all the shades in between we've been really stoked about seeing the, the super green 30 crosses that come yeah, out are just amazing green. 26 and 30 are some of my favorite this year heck the yeah these are just amazing and then there's the 38 that's just the workhorse of all just been, she does her thing. It's been a pleasure to work with that plant since yeah. day one. Perfect branching, holds herself up to a certain size. Squatty body. Predictable, chunky buds. And that super terpy with the blueberry and the key lime that 
becomes almost skittly, even though it's different than Skittles. Yeah, but it leaves that crazy mouth fail. You know, even just smelling it yesterday, some of them like yeah. stuck to our palates, stuck yeah, you, up our nose. You can't get rid of it. It's down your throat, like in your nose and down your throat, and you can't get it out. It's kind of a cream. Yeah, cream, like a little citrusy, and then that um, berry, the, some tart fruit in quite a few. Absolute winners. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about some of the unique genetics, those attributes that y'all are going for in this Fino Hunt This Go Round. We're really just selecting out of our own. But yeah, I guess we could talk about that. Yeah, because we like, we're deep into this multi-year Fino Hunt. And the first stage of it was bringing all these unique characters together and then making our selections and then really getting to know these clonal selections over the last few seasons to the point then we like have them characterized and then we put them together with the different selections. So like we're exploring the inverse crosses where we used one as the mother and the other as the father and vice versa, where we used the other one as the father this time and the vice versa as the, the mother. mother. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I asked this too, because you're both avid smokers and I know that at the end of the day, you want to make sure that it's something that tastes good, smokes smooth, you know, that you want to share with folks. So Absolutely. like what, what is can of country selections offering up as far as someone who really loves their herb? You know, we, we do this Fino hunt and the process is quite a bit just to get to the hunt. And then as it's, harvested, cured, dried, put away, we'll bring it back to the table. And then we have to sit down and select through smoking. And so it comes down to the smoke eventually. It's all about how it looks and how it smells while it's growing. But that all can change once you get the plant. It's dried, it's cured, and you break into it. Either the smell might have gone away there, or it might not be there when it breaks, or it might be in there when it smokes, or it might not be in there at all. And so it's going through the smoke that makes our selections, our selections, not this looks amazing, but it doesn't taste that good. Oh, well, we're going to get it out there anyway. No, you're not going to get that from us. The smoke has to be there, the smell and the look. And the yields are also a thing, but it's not like the thing that breaks it for me anyway, unless it was just so small that it, there's nothing you can do with it except maybe extract it. But anyway, yes, yeah, so we're, we're looking for yield as well. And that's to really get to the point where we do call it our selection. It takes it, it checking all those boxes right now in the pheno hunting process. We're hanging tags on the plants that we most enjoy because of their smells and aromas and um, their form or their look and their beauty. Yeah. And it's like relative to each line. And we're setting goals in a lot of the different lines of what it is that we're looking for. But getting to pick because we have these unique characters that carry their own traits getting put together. We're seeing a lot of these like nine by 26, for instance, on the farm, we it's one of our favorite blends. Well, now we've blended them genetically and we're like, one of our goals is to find one of the selections that really complements and brings forth both the parents and like is, is a, um, a nice blend. And we have some of those as far as we know, but you know, like we said, it has to be smoked. Yeah. We've got to smoke it. We're but just we looking got at these some things. that are ringers, right? From 26 and nine, just that perfect combo of both of them. Our OG, our 27 OG blueberry muffin has that like really balanced side of the OG and the blueberry that come out. And we have that in the nine by 26 as well. It's just like a great balance. Um, frosty, just looks amazing. Has both traits of the buds as well as the structure, the smells. It's exciting. Yeah, that's that line where it's like flavor and form. And then there's that lime green we were speaking about, like the evergreens, keep them the nine by thirties where we're nine, really super loving green. that. And then yep. the 29, the three and the 30 are all our highest crystal content oh, plants. Man. We and got some ringers this year. Some of those three by thirties, just yeah, amazing. Insane. Some of the most frost. Like mutant white. Like Yeah, unbelievable. Look like it's indoor grown. 
Yeah, in the twenty nine. shaded. <laughs> how the like the sun leaf, the seven fingers oh, yeah. has the like crystals all over the petioles inside. It's like yeah, that's amazing. The three has leaf buds. You know. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. Studded petioles. Studded that's what I'm calling. <laughs> <I like it. laughs> So awesome. you've started a pedigree here. You have won awards for some of your herb. I have seen you on the cover of High Times. So tell us a little bit about how Canna Country is hitting the market and what successes y'all have had. Um, that is a not, I, I don't want to loaded answer. question that, there. That question changes the whole attitude of the. It's been tough making it to market. Yeah, awards great. Like this, you know. it proves to us that what we're doing by smoking it and being with the plants is like a process that is comparable with other people because like CannaFest, there was no COA. Emerald Cups, there was no COA. When you talk about making it to market, there's all of a sudden the COA, Certificate of Analysis, that is a third-party test that is there attesting to quality. And yeah. it's like, well, wait a minute, what quality? That's just a COA and people it's look your for the THC. It's ticket into the market. If, the real you market, have you know, the THC. New market. Yes, the new market. So, that's, so where, that's where we get into trouble with some of our strains. But those strains are some of the most popular ones. We know that, but it doesn't matter. But this is the conversation I'd like to have here. This yeah. is like whether or not this third party test even gives us something relevant to like hang our hat on. Does it tell you how high you're going to get or, or what kind of experience you'll have just by looking at its THC content and stuff? And no, it's like part of the education that needs to go on, I think, is just what the COA is even telling us and mix that with what is diversity in the cannabis genome. And because like the whole new market, the regulated market is dominated by by type one cannabis, which is just high THC. And there's a lot of people who really are thrilled by the type twos, which is CBD and THC and type threes that you can smoke the resin hemp. And then all the types beyond without a number, even like absolutely and all of the minor and the THC yeah, where there's actual medicine in the plant, you know, and it's, and an experience like experience what used well, to always you know. inform breeding and keeping for us back before the COA, because now in the legal market, a lot of people are testing for THC and even determining what to keep or it's just market acceptance or not. But it used to be how it just like our, our pheno hunt, you know, how yeah. it hit. How does it taste? It like, how and it then how smell? it grows. How does it look? Okay. It grows like this, but does it yeah, taste it's like a it smells? fight to get in the door unless you have that higher THC on your COA. Otherwise you're just kind of like, wow, that's really unique. We can't see our list up here. 30 percenters. This is what people buy. You're not on that list. Sorry. We well, started getting 30. The <clears throat> 29 was just 31 recently. Which well, I'm is, talking shop on the 26 because of oh, its yeah. lower THC scores in the past, but mm -hmm. we've also gotten 24s this year. Like Whatever. Magic 50% higher so, than ever. Uh, now we're in stores. Now people want it because of that COA. And so we're, we are having some success co-branding with it right now and getting some larger orders through our dispensary that, they're happy with as well. So, and so people that are outside of the small area where people can get your flower in California, you know, and they want to grow this seed, are these genetics available? We've been making them available as we test them out enough to know what's in them and how stable they are for this, that, or the other, or especially intersex. We're sun growing farmers though. And so it's in any new environment, it's all about how that reacts, reacts. to the new environment, yeah. you know, it could, new. could be completely different at sea level, obviously, or 5,000 to 7,000 feet or, or an inmate indoors. Exactly. Or indoors. It could stress out. It's, you know, it's environment is, you know, born in the Emerald Triangle. So it's going to do best in that environment. We collect diverse things and some years uh, the rain happens earlier than others and some years there's more mold pressure, for instance. Um, and we also like to vary our times of harvest because of the small work crew. And so we have the early finishers that when they finish, they're done. Time to get them. 
And we have the later finishers that have a more of a conditions permitting maturity level. Like if it's nice out, you can leave it. If it's, if it's not as nice, you can take it. The 30 looks good, young or old. And so does the three. And the 30 just doesn't ever want to revert back to like trying to flower when it shouldn't. It's always a grower. Yeah. Seems to love to get to the end, but you know, it takes its time getting there. Yeah. And she's so unique in her diamond faceted nature. These hard, amazingly resinous bright, resin. As well, just white and super dark green. Lime green, just all the different green tones you could think of. As With well the as, forest funk. Yeah, as well as that funk. Yeah, <laughs> and she like really bred strong in those ways. The form of the flower really like with the 37. And the 26, all, like the, yeah. the way that that cream from the osamine and the creamy kind of flavor from the 26 hit that lime flavor and the pinene dominant terp from the 30 and just made a beautiful blend yeah and the form has been the most consistent in those because like they're about the same height the same like beautiful everything crystally just triangular shaped yeah and they got more of a leaf from the 30 because the 26 is our thinnest leaf and the 30 is the fat leaf fattest big cush leaf yeah incredible so i recently read that 17 percent of americans consume cannabis but 26% of cannabis consumers have actually tried to grow their own. It's pretty good. So one out of four is pretty good. So let's one out of four of that 17%. So I want to do a why people should know their farmer or grow their own medicine. I would like for y'all to weigh in on that. Some of the best flower is sun grown organic. So Yeah, there's the Emerald Triangle and there's other places that have sun grown. And so knowing your farmer is a big deal. Um, Are they organic? Are they fully sun? Are they assisted light? What's their situation? For instance, we're a rain catchment off grid. We have a solar system. Our carbon footprint is very little and we're all sun grown, organic. So knowing your farmer is a big deal. It's like, what are, you, what are you buying at the market? You're putting into your body. It's the same thing. Like, Know who your farmers are. Know what strains you like. And that may be exploring different farms and different farmers to get what works for you. So we encourage everybody to find what works for them. You're your own doctor. Yeah. What about growing your own, Reggie? Well, it's, it's a wonderful practice to get into nurturing something. And especially the herb plant, she's so expressive of the care she gets or doesn't get. In fact, it's, um, I've always loved that when people grew their own, um, they would come and get herb all the time and then they decided to grow their own and they were really into quality because I, I tend to make some weed snobs that I couldn't sell swag once I educate people forever. And so like, then they grow their own and then they see what it really takes to bring perfection to the market through the drying, the curing and the processing. Oh, yeah. And they always come back like, holy shit. And yeah, I'd say one out scary. of four sticks with it <laughs> out of the one out of four. Uh-huh. And then, then, um, but it is, it's so fun to just see. And then like be a part of it with your plant, you know, it's just fun connection. picking your own fruit too. The connection. Growing your own food. You like, you know, it tastes better because it's yours. You know what I mean? <laughs> like even if it doesn't probably you're like, Oh, this is delicious. I worked my ass off on this. Thing. Yeah. Better well, and you good, know, what right? went into it. Yeah. So, you know, you said it's all going to vary based on your latitude, your environment, you know, whether or not because of where you live, you may have to grow indoors, you know, maybe light depth. Some people may have the option to do full term sun grown, but it's all going to be different for everyone. So what you share is how things grow here for you in Humboldt County. But what I find interesting is that it allows everyone to be their own artist and do their own breeding. So they may purchase your seeds and have a different experience. Absolutely. That's something we're counting on. We hope to get feedback from everybody that's growing in different places. So we have some understanding about it as well. Yes. So if people do want to engage with you, they want to purchase your seeds and then they want to give you feedback. I know you're on social media. So what's your Instagram handle? How can people find you? Country Farms is the Instagram and the website is canacountryfarms.com. Alpine Seed Groups. You can purchase Canna Country Selections 
at alpineseedgroup.com. And then be sure and give the guys feedback on Instagram at Canna Country Selections. And you can see what's happening day to day out on the farm at Canna Country Farms. All right, let's talk for a minute about feminized versus regular seeds and then where y'all are on that as far as what's going to be available to the gen pop who wants to grow Canna Country Selections. Feminized is what most people who buy bulk want, what most people who have a plant number count limit, a limit of plants that they can do. Say you have six plants available that you can do legally and you want them all to be female unless you want to make seeds. But usually people prefer sensimia for a variety of reasons. The regular seed though, it is the male and female. And we don't know what's going to happen long-term for the genome if we stick with feminized breeding, for instance, and get rid of this Y chromosome. We don't know. So we've started all of our own through regular breeding. And that's like our major seed production for all of our R&D and everything has been regular. And so all of these, the CC3 through 38 are all from regular seed, true females. Not to say that means anything other than just what I said. Yeah. So we don't know, but now we're really exploring quantity. And we did this last year as well of numbers of these feminized crosses. And like the biggest part of the breeding and growing always to me is observation. And we have spent a huge amount of time truly observing all aspects of the plant. It's been like playing video games, looking at every bud all the time and do it again. Every day. Yep. Finally, we're up in the tops looking at the buds (laughs) and the (laughs) seeds are getting fat and like, it's easier to see a banana, but like you always got to be on your lookout because that's like our job here is like making sure that the stability we speak of is intersex stability first. And then it's working towards stability of traits. You know, harvest time within a line is big within a cross, you know, how close in harvest are there? How many phenotypes are we seeing? How many of them are the short pheno versus the tall pheno? How many look the same? Yeah. You know, yeah. We're, we're really looking for anything and everything. And taking notes and classifying them based on what we're seeing and looking at them like, oh, I'm going to smoke you. Yeah. We got triples. <laughs> we got weirdos. There's everything in there. Yeah. There's every, every bunch you can think of. You know, the seeded um, studded petiole, right. excitable petiole. It's got to have a name where the web foot petiole gets it. The web is like the, our next round of full terms. We got some Hawaiian web to look at too. And those are yeah, freaks. Pretty freaky. Latitude in general for our seeds made it 40 degrees north latitude. They like finish with the season just fine. Some might get caught out in, in the rain more than others. Some come in yeah. before the rain, like some are some of the smaller. blueberries. Yep. Some take more light. Some do great in low light. Yeah. Like to, some like, do better in full sun, just beat down. Yeah. Like the 30. Just put me in the wind, the 26. Matter. Yeah. 26. Yeah. 30, like 27. Those are all really good ones. So me. latitude and conditions, the conditions are like what really on Maui, we would use different genetics for the leeward side versus the windward side. You know, ones that can handle heat and no water on the leeward side. Or hella wind or yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah. Something a little stronger. And so we know like 29 has been the earliest. 37 was the earliest in the collection when she was around. And 29 has been predictably early and makes these nice easy to process indoor looking buds all the way up super frosty and she has and that, that earthy um, dosy yep apical deep. dominance and she's made a lot of uh, longer buds with that indoor look and that just weird crystally super petiole frosty too. yeah everything's got frost on it even the stock so we put her with things that we thought would make a predictably more resistant to environmental moisture for instance and resinous. Yeah, and she adds the resin too. And and some some dirt, some earth from the dosi likes to come through in some of those crosses. Yeah, in the nine by twenty-nine. It's a gasp forward, like stank. There's a batch that had a, a longer, taller 
version and a shorter version yeah, that really was like nine versus version. 29. Yeah. yeah. Like calf 29, down to two feet versus the three and a half. Tall butters. and stretchy, nine short and squatty, you know, and to have those like that perfect one. Yeah, but know, flavor cool. complemented each other to Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Nine really brings gas forward with that. It's so much depth skunk. in that skunk. And then yeah. the citrus, that citrus is still, it's hard to get that funk out of there. Like it's in it. Yeah. It's nice. It is. It's, it's what it brings. And then it's like if people have a longer season or they're at a lower latitude and like in one of their priorities is size. Then it's like we go towards the 30s, the later flowering things, the nine by 30, because the nine's a later flower too. They have a better chance of growing a bigger plant, but the quicker finishing things, especially to an equatorial, more equatorial environment or southern latitude, makes them even quicker. Yeah, like the 29 and 38 would probably be pretty quick. Super quick and not really, it'd be like a foot tall in Hawaii, 18 inches. So what about someone who is in a harsh, more arid environment? Is there anything that would be remotely close to try? And then yeah. like, you know, what do we do to just give them a chance at growing without stressing? Well, Canna Country early? Farms is at a very hot, very windy when windy. it's windy. Like environmental pressures are like that. Yeah. Where it was 117 that time. Yeah, it's been extremely hot, extremely windy, extremely hot and windy, extremely wet, cold mornings. It's pretty extreme here, but it's not constant. So if you're talking about a place that's like the desert, we don't know. We haven't grown there yet. But 38 but in the desert. As far as it goes, the stress test is pretty good here. Like We've had a, a high amount of winds for months here, and every time – we plant in May, it's just like a fan for two months and the plants just get beat up. And this year was no different. Yeah, but things like the 38, we've noticed like in hot depths, it was that last year, it made actually chunky pieces where like some things finished early and less chunky like the 29. It can it kind of go that way. So like a dry, arid environment like that too. The 38 is pretty bulky. The 37 is a quick and a bulky one. 30 definitely can take heat too. It's either way. Yeah. That, that, that is a beast. It's such an all-arounder. The 38 yes. is the workhorse of a plant, but the 30 is like a notch up in size and it never gives an Growth. issue either. Yeah. yeah. It outgrows it by the double at yeah. least. Yep. Which more stretchy. The 38 is like perfect for environments that you don't want stretch. Yeah, exactly. Like the greenhouse, the volume yep. approach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And same with the 37. If it gets hot in the greenhouse, it might stretch out a little bit, but outside it's a squatty one. Yeah. And holds yourself up really yeah, good. 29 tough. did too, even six foot tall. Yep. Stands and the line. The nine is such a globe. She's not only the densest flower, she's a globe of a plant. Uh, she's got like a crown shaped bud. Yeah, she's deceiving too. She's like the smokiest one too. Just stony. Stony baloney. Couch. Sit on the couch for a while after that, do we? For us, because some people go the other way. She's psychedelic <laughs> stimulant. Okay, so we want to turn a bunch of people on to purchasing seeds, growing their own. And let's say they're doing it like the way you saw it when you were a kid, where your mom or your grandma were growing a few plants with their vegetable garden. What are hot tips from people that have been farming their whole lives and gardening cannabis flower? Start. Just start. Yeah, it's an easy start plant. Start farming. It's pretty easy to work with. Yep. Are you just pushing a seed down into the ground or are we... I mean, yeah, general? you can. Put it's, it right in your garden and water it. But I would imagine probably starting it in a tray with dirt and water and covering it slightly so they can take off and pop its head up and then be transplanted into something small like a four or five inch pot and then growing till it has roots to hit the ground. But you can plant it right in the pot. Are there great companion plants that cannabis flower likes? It's pretty tolerant. I like low growing things around it that like, and they say them like oily things that will, when their root zones interact, that it'll make them all produce more oil. Mm. So that's interesting. Yeah. But it's like, it gets up. It's taller than a lot of other things, which makes it a cool garden companion. 
it can flow around all sorts of stuff. Yeah. You can have some of the plants um, start feeding your soil nitrogen. All right. Well, is there anything we didn't ask you that would round out our conversation? We can get more into 38 being such a huge extractor. Yeah. Like, um, and then why we bred it with like not only the other blueberry muffin crosses to stroke the early and the resistant and that fruity flavor that really like seems to be in the descendants, like a more tart blueberry to me. Like there's more of a raspberry That's or a something lime, tarty, tarty in there. Lime and the blueberry make a different yeah. kind of flavor. Exactly. And how we put the 38 with the different can of country selections just to peer within with it as a donor this year. And that's cool. Yeah. And it's a really like 6.4% washer. So having, knowing that it's a producer like that and hopefully crossing it with something else that is, is coming up with something new. That's maybe a heavy. Yeah. But we know it's yielder even more so these globe. And it's not just a yielder. It's also like super terpy and amazing looking rosin. So we are excited about the 38 in so many ways. All right. And currently on the Alpine Seed Group site, you can get the 38 by 29 feminized seeds. There are six or seven varietals available on the site. And we're excited about what y'all have coming up. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we're going to we're excited as well. a lot more. Yeah, thank you for giving us a sneak peek. And folks will be able to actually see the guys pheno hunting and sniffing up on the ladies <laughs> in some of the videos that we'll have on the Alpine Seed Group YouTube channel and also Instagram. So take a look at that. And we look forward to hearing more from you guys soon. Great. Thanks. Thanks Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Cannabis Breeders Network is an Alpine Seed Group production and a member of the PodConnects Cannabis Podcast Network. Editing and sound design are by Jamie Humiston. Connect with the show on Instagram at Cannabis Breeders Network and purchase the highest quality cannabis genetics at alpineseedgroup.com. Thanks for listening to today's show. To check out more great cannabis podcasts, go to podconnects.com. Here's a preview of one of our other shows. How do cannabis CEOs balance growth and optimization strategies? What is THCO, Delta 10, and CBNA, and why should you care about these minor cannabinoids? And why is an endocannabinoid system covered in medical school? Most people think they're up to date in trends in the cannabis industry, but they're about six weeks behind. Learn about what is truly next in the cannabis space by joining myself, Brian Fields, and Kellen Finney every week on the Dime Podcast and, of course, on PodConnects.